up you guys welcome back to wide body nation got about 500 miles to drive from uh you know around nashville to south of atlanta so figured i'd spend some time with you guys here on the wide body nation podcast episode two so if you're new to the channel uh most of our content is not podcasty in nature but i figured that on my drives i would let you guys kind of inside the uh the crazy mind that I have as far as planning out new videos, new purchasing decisions. This is kind of your your look into uh, the behind the scenes operation. So obviously we are in a new 2021 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Wide Body Red Eye. All of the names, one car, and I just picked it up yesterday up here in 10 IC. So as you guys can see, it's got the great demonic red interior. 10 out of 10 would recommend and it is sunday valentine's day so i would recommend it twice on sundays especially on val valentine's day last year this is pre-corona all of my cars with red interiors were rented out on turo through and through top dollar it was a good good money weekend for turo but anyway <clears throat> what do i want to talk about today as far as all things wide body nation goes obviously a lot of it's going to be centered around this car uh that is the the big dog the top of the the top of the fleet if you will now a lot of people have been hitting me up about different events to go to friends family and then obviously the wide body nation as well so a lot of the things as far as modifications go are going to be more functional in nature and uh that's i'm gonna bring the first thing up so tires i've been kind of nerding out on tires for the past month month or two and you know tires are interesting because obviously there's sacrifices to be made whichever tire you go with right even you know i'm i feel like i really and in between kind of the, the Michelin Pilot Sport, uh, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, which is what I have on the CA Corvette, and I really enjoy it. I'm just worried that that thing's not going to hook on this car when I really want it to hook, whether it's on a prep surface or whether it's, you know, in Mexico on the highways when we're doing some poles. So that has me really considering basically either Mickey Thompson's, Toyo's, or um, Nittos. I think those are the ones I'm gonna go with because they still gotta be street legal so I can rip around on the streets, but I also wanna get some good grip, you know, our compound kind of deal. So, you know, a lot of people have been telling me, you know, get the get the, the Mickey Thompson ET Street SS's or R's or whatever it may be. Uh, part of me wants to go with the Nittos uh, the Nittos seem like they would be kind of a cool, a cool thing to do. Basically, getting the same tires, the Nitto NTO 5Rs that came on the Super Stock, or they came on the Demon and currently come on the Super Stock. On a quick side note, let me know how the, the audio is in here because I think it'll be better than my first podcast in the C7. The C7 does not have a lot of sound deadening, so I think this car, the audio will be better. But comment down below, please. Anyway. All of that considered, you know, oh, cool, super stock tires on a red eye, yeah, whatever. But honestly, I'm really leaning towards the R Triple Eight R's because I love how the stock rims look. I probably want to get another set of rims and then have those uh, wrapped in the R Triple Eight R's. Probably a 315, 30, or 35, 20, right? The stock rims are 20 inches. I believe the R Triple Eight R's come in the 315s, which is good because I want to get that little extra, that extra 10 millimeters of tire width. Uh, this car definitely needs it. I have not been able to. Uh, let's see, we got 142 miles on this right now. Have not been able to send it at all. And then when I do try to send it, it just spins city USA, right? So I mean, it's 25 degrees out here in Nashville right now. It's like freezing rain. So not exactly uh, Hellcat Red Eye weather, but this did come with the all seasons on it because I didn't want to pay the extra money for Pirelli's, uh, you know, the Pirelli summer tires. I, I don't really mess with the Pirelli's. I just like my own, my own tires. So going to burn these back ones off on a nice day in Georgia for your viewing pleasure. 
And I gotta tell you guys, even though the, the Toyos, oh gosh, yeah, we gotta get some defrost going up in here. The rain is certainly freezing. All right, all right. Yeah, it's, uh, this ice storm is not cool. Especially when you take delivery of a Hellcat, you can't send it. But, apologize if you guys can hear the AC. All right, we'll let that, let that heat that up real quick, but, yeah, so as first impressions of the car, I mean, it's a charger, right? So, simple formula. I always like to say the Dodge Charger and even the Challenger, it's just like Chevy with their Tahoe and their Suburban. They figured out what people like and it works and they're not gonna fix what's not broken. Now, I think both Chevy and Dodge are in kind of a situation now where they actually do need to change the game or else they're gonna just slowly bleed out of business. Between the government imposing fuel, uh, like, you know, uh, gas guzzling regulation, like first on this car, $2,100 of the MSRP was a gas guzzler tax because this is a passenger car. So it falls within a certain MPG stipulation. The GT500 has it. The, the, Chevy, Cor or the, yeah, the Chevy Corvette C8 does not have that stipulation. So that is a, Fun fact for you guys right there. I'm gonna throw on the cruise control so we don't get pulled over. Uh, let's see, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cruise it up a little bit. But yeah, the weather is not good. Anyway, I think I've already talked about my philosophy on Dodge. I'll do a whole different podcast on that, but I wanna go back to modifications. So tires, I'm leaning r 888 stock-ish fitment. Maybe we can get an extra little bit of width and uh, keep the, I wanna keep the side profile 315 because it looks really good. Uh, not 315, 35, sorry. Now, as far as as far as far other mods go, a lot of y'all were telling me getting a catch can, um, either, um, I can't remember, comment down below what the brand was. Uh, one of them was called like Billet Technologies or something. The other one had an L in it. I think it was an L and a T, like TLM or LTK or something. I don't, I don't know what it was. Comment down below the type of catch can I need to get. A lot of y'all were telling me I need to get one, so I'm definitely down for that. Uh, my tuner, uh, my tuner and favorite shop for uh, everything for me is TK Auto Works up here in Clarksville, Tennessee, so he'll hook that up for me. And then, let's see, intake, don't think it needs anything. It already has a massive K&N style, you know, intake on it. Exhaust, uh, I think we'll go with muffler delete, a mid muffler delete first, and then We'll see what kind of uh, what kind of feedback I get from y'all as far as actual cat back goes. So we, we can kind of see how that shakes down on that. And then yeah, I really got to start learning the learning the the modification, learning the tuning game for these cars because I came up with uh, you know Super STIs and that's what I know the best. So I got to do a little bit of research, y'all, but. Let me know what kind of rims you guys recommend. I really want to go with some forged rims. I don't really mess with non-forged rims unless they're they're OEMs. Uh, unfortunately, I believe the Corvette C8 rims are not forged, which I think is pretty stupid on Chevy's part, but whatever, Chevy can't do everything right. All right, so let's talk more first impressions on this 2021 Red Eye, since there's not too many people that have it yet. You know, uh, like I said earlier in the video, it is, you know, it is your Dodge Charger that's been basically the same for about five, six years now. However, the wide body part of it, you feel it. It feels really wide. It feels like I'm driving a Raptor except low to the ground, which is even harder because the Raptor, at least you're up high, you can see everything. You're like, all right, cool. The Raptor's got a 360 camera for parking and you can turn it on if you need to. This only has the backup camera, which is pretty shoddy, if we're being honest, Dodge. You know, talking about the infotainment, I didn't even get this with Nav because I have my phone, you know, Apple CarPlay plugs right in. Don't need to pay the extra thousand dollars to have, you know, 2010 navigation system, like pull up some weird, well, only two color navigation screen. And then let's see, speedometer, it's pretty cool looking at a 220 mile an hour speedometer. I love the fact that it still has the analog gauges. I'm a big fan of analog gauges. My favorite gauge cluster is the 08 to 2010 STI gauge cluster that has the big tachometer in the middle. Um, I love I love having the tachometer analog, especially if it's the primary focus, especially in a manual car, right? 
Um, getting pretty bad MPG right now. Let's scroll through and see what kind of MPG I'm getting. Messages, audio. Looks like we're doing 13.5 MPG. So we're just a little bit worse than a Prius. And then Tesla does have us beat with their MPG. So, you know, props to Tesla. Um, I'm gonna start making some videos on on electric cars versus gasoline cars, but uh, let's keep going through the impression. So this came with the all season Pirellis on it, which I don't necessarily love them as a tire, but there's a time and a place, right? I'm taking, I took delivery of this car in the middle of February, basically during an ice storm. So with all that being said, it is convenient that uh, we have all seasons on this car for this weekend to get this thing safely back to Georgia. Now, another great thing is that I am knocking out the break-in mileage on the way down to, back to my, my house, you know? So that is helpful so that we can start sending it basically tomorrow. And then, I don't know, a lot of you, some of you guys in the live stream were commenting, why didn't I get it fully loaded? And some of you were making it as an informed comment saying like, oh, why didn't I get a sunroof? Why didn't I get the carbon fiber package? Why didn't I get the suede headliner? Why didn't I get uh, you know, a Harman Kardon audio system? Why didn't I get the $3,500 hood roof trunk painted package? All that good stuff, right? Well, as you, many of you guys know, my philosophy on these cars is that every trim level increases your value proportionately to how much you pay for it, but little odds and ends, dinks and doodads, that you might like, or you're not gonna get the value out of. Now, if you're personally gonna get the value out of it while you use it and while you get a warm and fuzzy inside every time you hear your Harman Kardon system turn on or every time you stroke your suede headliner just because you love suede on the part that you don't touch so much, props to you, that's fine. To each their own, right, it's your car. I'm talking about the value of the car when you trade it in. When you trade it in, you can go on Kelly Blue Book right now, do, do a 2020 Charger, Option the suede headliner. Option a Harman Kardon. You're gonna get pennies on the dollar for it. You know, if it costs you twelve, two thousand dollars to put on here, they're gonna give you like seven hundred bucks maybe for that same cool option as trade-in value, right? So, I got an all-metal red eye. You know, pay the money for the red eye, pay three hundred bucks for the red interior. Like this interior only costs three hundred dollars because the Hellcats already come with the Laguna leather, and this this stuff feels like I'm sitting on a couch right now. This is I'm in a couch. I'm on a couch missile right now. I, sorry, a highway missile, a fast couch. A really fast couch. As far as the rest of the interior goes, like this, the console's nice and soft. We got the nice machine Hellcat uh, trim that I didn't want to pay extra for the, for the carbon fiber. Just like I said, keeping the cost down on this thing, right? My sticker was only 82.5 and 4,000 of that was the Ship was this gas guzzler tax and the shipping cost because it's like 1500 bucks. I'll show you guys the window sticker in another video, but you know, we got all soft touch up here, relatively speaking. It's like leather, probably not real. This is real leather. Get the got the sticker right here, the Laguna, Laguna leather sticker. Yeah, natural, all natural, right? But you know, the whole thing does the job. I like it a lot, I'll tell you that much. It looks, it looks very sinister coming down the road every all my friends in, in Tennessee that uh you know we rolled up on they were just like wow it's got presence to it now I do think it needs a little bit of tasteful mods we've already talked about window tint we've already talked about you know the roof blackout I'm I'm tempted to not black out the tempted to not black out the hood because if I black out the hood then you kind of lose the accents from all the all the vents and stuff so kind of torn on that to be honest let me know what you guys think let me know if you think i should black out the hood or not if you guys are listening to me uh you know basically mentally and verbally uh vomit on you guys right now and you're like i want to see the rest of this car then check out this link right here we did a 30 minute live stream walk around if you guys haven't seen that yet that was like right after i got it back from the dealership so if you want to see a little bit more ins and outs of the car the wheels the engine bay all the little nicks and knacks that i'm talking about you know with like the vents in the hood and how they change that then go ahead check that link out uh it just popped out it should be gone by now but 
that is a much more like a uh, car focus one. We're, we're talking more strategy here. We're talking about more feelings, right? Because everything's about feelings in 2021. So, exhaust wise, it's definitely quiet when you start it up. I've done a couple of Instagram, uh, you know, reels on it, posts on Instagram. If you guys haven't followed us there, go check that out. It's linked in the description. Um, Real Wide Body Nation on Instagram. You know, the exhaust actually doesn't sound that loud when you start it up, but then it opens up as soon as it's under load. Even when you're just revving it, the valves open up, and then on the on the road, it, it opens up good. Like, here, I'll, I'll do a little set for you guys right here. Got to be relatively chill, though, because, uh, yeah, it is pretty sketchy out here as far as ice goes. It's 25 degrees still. But, you know, I'm really ready for them to update the charger, but I just feel like there's going to be stuff that's taken out of it, whether they're not going to be allowed to put certain motors in them, or I don't know exactly what they're going to do to start nerfing these and, like, you know, dumbing them down because of fuel, uh, you know, like gas guzzler restrictions and all this other stuff. But I just feel like the new version of the charger is going to be handicapped in some ways but way better in others obviously they could easily get the 10 inch or a 12 inch screen here you know all this other stuff adaptive cruise control that is something that you can't even get on the charger hellcats um if you guys a lot of you guys were asking me why i didn't get it fully loaded you can't even get like these these switches right here have to be blank on a hellcat that you, you can't get adaptive cruise control on it at least for the wide bodies uh this year and last year but other than that, last thing was is that, um, well, I guess we'll save that for another video, but the tires was the tires and rims, really what I want y'all's feedback on. If you're watching this long in the podcast, uh, I guess that means that you care. Uh, so go ahead and comment below wheel preference, tire preference, or both. Um, what company you think I should go with, what either online company to supply them or like an actual company like a Borla exhaust or like a RSR wheels or Whatever you guys think, I really want to see what, what people are feeling because I feel like I don't know enough. Maybe I'm missing some sort of deal. Maybe I'm not looking at some sort of wheels that really just will set the car off. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, you know, more, more podcasts to come from inside the old cockpit of the new Daily Driver. Yes, this is going to be the Daily Driver. That's where I am in life right now. I need an 800 horsepower Daily Driver because, you know, what else is a 26-year-old going to do? So appreciate you guys tuning in. Stay safe out there. I'm going to safely drive home the last uh, few hundred miles, and then this thing will be broken in for your enjoyment. Appreciate it, and I will see you guys for the next podcast.